good servers, and I say that because there is a difference. But trust me, I've been a server. I've seen the lazy bullshit ones that complain about their tips, and I'm like, well, maybe if you didn't suck. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. This is Izzy the Hippie. Um, today's video is going to be, as you can tell by the title below, it is going to be a story time. Um, this is the story of how I almost became a sugar baby. My bad. So, um, I was a server for a very long time. I worked for Red Robin and I worked at a specific location. Um, I don't want to give all of that crap away, but yes, I was a server and I worked at Red Robin and then I moved my way up to bartending and I got this regular and it was this man and it was his wife and um they were my regulars they were so sweet they were so nice if i wasn't there then they would always ask for a friend of mine named matt and they would always get his section um so it was i didn't think anything of it like they constantly wanted me like because they also asked for a guy when i wasn't there so and matt's personality meshed well with mine so i just thought that they liked our personalities and that's what they kept coming back for so um yeah, so we built a repertoire, I don't even know how to say that, but we built a camaraderie with each other for, I want to say like two years they were coming in, at least a year and a half that they would come in, they would eat in my section, um, and then they would leave. If I happened to be bartending, they'd always stop by the bar to say hi before they left. It was never to the point where they would like text me to see if I was in for that shift or anything like they didn't have my number but they would always ask for me when they came in and if they didn't get me they were fine they would still stay and eat they were really nice he was from Ireland and she was from here and he was I'd want to say mid 60s um, I could be wrong I could be off he had a construction job but he made a lot of money playing poker is actually how he made his money and his son was really big in gambling as well um, gambling and playing poker like that's how his son made his money as well um, so yeah, so they had money, um, but they were never, he was never like rude or, or uptight. He was very laid back. He had a mullet for goodness sake. This man had a mullet. It was hilarious. Um, he was very nice. He had a thick Irish accent, so he would always joke and it would always, I kind of giggle. Sometimes I couldn't understand it. Although Irish accents are nice. Just, you know, not when they're attached to a man who's older than your father at the time. Um, or your father's age at least and my daddy old. He is now 70. Okay. Uh, I mean, I almost saw him as like not necessarily a second father figure, but maybe like a uncle figure. Um, so I never thought anything about sitting down and talking with him and stuff like that. Um, I just thought that we were communicating and I would always sit across from him wherever we were sitting and stuff like that. So nothing ever looked weird when I would do that. And Red Robin was laid back enough that if it was slow and dead and you're taking care of your other tables, if you happen to have any at that time, you could do that. You could sit down with the guest who's a regular because they want you to build that camaraderie and they want you to build that relationship so people keep coming back and spending money. So they didn't mind that I would do that when it was slow with him and stuff. So we would do that and we would talk and all that jazz. And then one day, one day, um, considering it's just him, I don't, A, I don't want to say his name at all and I haven't spoken to him since. And if I'm being 100% honest, this has been... Oh, how many years ago was it? It's been a few years and I kind of just pushed it back out of my head so I don't really remember his name. Pretty sure his name's James. Saying that... Oh, okay, so I gotta edit that out. I wasn't gonna edit anything out. I was just gonna flow. Whatever. His name was James. Nobody can find anything off of that. His name's James. So, uh, James came in one day and he sat down at the bar and it was during the day and it was slow. Um, it was like a Tuesday or something like that. It was during the week. Sorry. During the day. He came in one day during the day and sat down during the day. Um, it was during the week and he came in and he sat down at the bar because that's where I was. Um, and it was just him by himself, one of his lunch visits and we were talking and then he was talking about this pub he knew in Plano. So I guess you can kind of guess where I worked at now. I'm so great at this, trying to hide stuff. Yay. Anyway, so he was talking about this pub he knew. The pub. This pub he knew in Plano that had really good... Red Robin has really yummy fish and chips. Like, a lot of guests love them. Um, so yeah. So Red Robin is known for that. And he loved their fish and chips there. But then he was talking about this pub in Plano that he'd go to where he liked their fish and chips too. 
Um, he said those were the best he's ever had. Different batter and they reminded him of home is what he said. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And he was like, if you ever have a day off, I can take you. And I'm not, I'm on, I mean, looking back now, like, bitch, you dumb. Like, you is so naive. Hello. But I like to see the best in people and just assume the best. So I thought that this guy, my uncle figure, was just trying to recommend a place to go out to eat. And so I was like, yeah, okay, um, sure. And I'm, he never... To his benefit, he never said that his wife would be going with us, uh, but I just assumed she would be. I didn't think that, and even if it was just him and I, I didn't think anything of it. Like, I just not like that. Um, I just don't assume those things, especially since being a curvier girl, like, don't get me wrong, and I mean this with, I mean this with, I just don't mean this to be ugly, but he definitely wasn't the best looking 65 year old out there, but he wasn't the worst. But he had a mullet. Okay. And, um, so, but even with that, like, I'm just a curvier girl. And I'm, anytime anyone's hitting on me, like, I never, ever, like, unless, like, they flat out say something that cannot be mistaken. And this making it sound like I get hit on all the time. Because I do. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, anytime that anybody does say anything or like that, I'm a curvier girl. Like, don't get me wrong. I know I'm pretty and stuff, but I'm a curvier girl and that's not everybody's type. And I mean, I don't fault anyone for that because not every guy out there is my type. So why would I be butthurt that I'm not every guy's type or girl? I'm not gay, but you know what I mean? Like, why would I be butthurt that I'm not everyone's type? That's stupid because not everybody is my type. So, um, I do, but I do get taken aback when people do flirt with me, like, blatantly and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, he, um, uh, he, um, invited me out, sorry. And so then I was, I didn't think anything of it, you know? So I was like, okay, cool, whatever, Dan's wants to take me to go eat some fish and chips. Like, I love fish and chips, like, I'm Portuguese, so I'm down for any kind of fish. Um, and so then... We went, um, or so then he asked for my number so that he can contact me because at that time I did not have a car. I was living with my best friend and we worked at the same place. So we just shared the car. Like we, so I give him my number, not thinking anything of it. And then he texts me. Um, and I remember thinking, oh wow, James is older, but he can text. I know that's stupid. Cause that's so like ageism. Cause it doesn't matter what age you are. You can grasp technology at any age, but my father isn't that great with it so in my head like all older men that age aren't that great with it but that's just dumb for me to assume i know don't worry um anyway so then i gave him my number and so then don't even think anything about it don't even i mentioned to heather that he was talking about that place and i wonder where he was talking about and i was like whatever <laughs> so then i tell him my next day off and i think it's like a thursday or something like that that's usually what it was and so then he's like okay then we'll go as soon as they open on thursday and we'll go have the um fish and chips for lunch and i was like okay bet um free lunch he was like my treat he said my treat i remember that i remember him saying my treat so i was like okay free lunch i'm in um and so then he so then i give him my address and he picks me up on thursday and he's by himself i don't think anything of it because i'm like okay oh sorry because i'm like okay whatever he's by himself um so I get in the car and I ask him where his wife is. I do remember asking him where his wife is and him saying she's at work. So it looks like it's just me and you today. And he didn't say it like, it's just me and you. And you know, he was just like, she's at work. So it's just me and you today. I'm not even going to try the Irish accent. Don't want to offend nobody. Um, and so then I was like, okay, cool. That's fine. And I was like, I'm excited. I'm hungry and I love fish and chips. And he was like, yeah, I'm excited. You're excited. So he takes me to a pub that I have been to before. I've been to it at least two or three times and I just didn't know the name of it so I didn't know when he was telling me. Um, so he takes me to this pub and it's a really nice pub. It's a good pub and um, it's got like that feeling. It's dark inside. It's nice. It's quiet. Um, well, it was quiet at that time but usually it's popping because it's a really good pub. Um, and so I tell him, I'm like, oh, I have been here before. I've just never ate here before. I've only drank beer. And he laughed and he was like, that's funny. And I was like, and he was like, yeah, a lot of people that I take here, if they have been here before, they've never really looked at the food menu. And I'm like, I'm one of those people. And so we arrived there early and we have to, and I think they opened at 10 or was it 11? It was 10 or 11 and it was early for like a pub. But in general, they opened early. They opened at like, that. but I guess because they had delicious food there because it did get kind of busy. Anyway, I digress. 
Um, we arrived there early, like 10 minutes early, and so we wait on a bench outside for them to open. And we, um, and we're sitting down, and then he looks at me, and he says, I have something to tell you. And I'm thinking, oh shit, like, is he gonna make me go Dutch, or did something happen with his kids, or, you know, like, the way he said it was, was serious, it wasn't our normal goofy silly conversation and I was like oh, and I was like oh uh yeah what is it what happened and he goes well I think you're an amazing server and an amazing person and you always take such great care of me and my wife he said my wife while he's telling me this y'all he knows I know it's his wife and he said but I find myself falling in love with you and I said because mind you bitch is dumb Oh, I love you too, James. And he said, oh, you're so sweet. But I'm falling in love with you. And then it clicked. And if you know me, which most likely you do because you're watching this and only people I know watch this. But if you know me, I, I'm not very good at hiding my uh, emotions on my face. I, Sorry about that, I got interrupted um but yeah so he says that he's in love with me and then as i was saying if you know me i can't hide the emotion for like the first three seconds on my face so i'm pretty sure it went a little like oh i love you too james no i'm in love with you um oh i'm 100 percent positive that's how that went um, and so then I said, oh, and he said, now, now realize that I'm not going to try anything funny today. Like I'm not, I'm not that kind of person. I just want you to know that I do have strong feelings for you. And I'd like you to keep an open mind and see where this goes. I said, okay. And then I said, okay, well, let me think about it because he was a 65 year old married man. So, you know, so giving him giving me time was, I, I meant it as let me find out, have time to let you down easily without hurting your feelings. And he took it as, oh, she's gonna think about it. I, this might happen. And I was like, whatever, like let him think what he wants. I just have to find a way. And so then I was like, okay. And he was, and then he just went on about how he thought that I was such a sweet girl and how he found me beautiful. And he thought I was so attractive and intelligent and that he found me mesmerizing that I was always on his mind and that um and I said well what would and I don't remember her name and I'm not gonna try and say it now um we'll call her Mary and I was like what would Mary think and he said um well Mary knows that I find you attractive and I was like, okay, um, finding me attractive and then making me your girl on the side are two different things. And he was like, yes, yes. And he was like, well, she knows that um, I have um, wandered before. And as long as I keep coming home, she doesn't care. Could you imagine, like, obviously, you know where the story is going, considering it was, I almost was a sugar baby. But could you imagine if I said yes like I'll be your sugar mama and then they came in to eat together would she even keep coming in knowing that I accepted her man to, like oh boy I just I can't even imagine like I find that I find it crazy anyway so then I was like oh, okay and in my head I'm like yeah sure because every woman's like oh yeah I get what you want as long as you come home no <laughs> you got me and me you stuck with me <laughs> And I was like, okay. And so then we went inside. Finally, they let us in. And at that, then it was awkward because like I knew what his intentions were on that day. And then um, he was ordering as if we were a couple and the waitress was slicking at us. And I was obviously younger than him. I mean, obviously I'm not, I don't look 65 now. And this was years ago. So like, and he wasn't, and it wasn't like I looked like his daughter or anything, like, because A, we didn't look like, and B, he wasn't behaving how he would if I was his daughter. Like, he wasn't touching me or anything. He was very respectful. Very respectful the whole day. This is not like a bashing him kind of thing. Um, this is just a story. But, like, he, he called me baby and he called me doll. And I know you can call your kids that, but there's a, there's a tone and there's a, a way of saying it where it's obvious if you're talking to a kid to where if you're talking to... A significant other and he was doing 
the significant other one. Uh, and then he paid, and then we were leaving, and then I told him in the car, you know, I've been thinking about it this whole time, and I've been trying to keep an open mind, but I really don't think that I can for the simple fact that I could not, I can't be with a married man, is how I put it. And he was like, well, just think about it because, you know, my wife is okay with it. Like, I will call her up right now and you can talk to her and she'll let you know that she's fine with it. <laughs> um, and that, uh, all this stuff. And then I was like, okay, well, I'll think about it, but I really don't think that I'll be able to, James. And he knew about my problems. Like, I had to pay off surcharges and that's why I didn't have my car because I had to pay off surcharges in order to renew. And that's why I didn't have one. I was saving up for all of that. And he knew that and everything. He was like, well, how much do you have to pay off your surcharges? And I was like, I need $300 to pay them off. And this was before the date. So he already knew all of this. Um, and so then he was like, I want to help you. I want to help you get on your feet. And that's when I realized he is trying to be my sugar daddy. Because he was like, I'm going to pay for your surcharges. I will get you a car. It might not be brand new, but it'll be new-ish. And it'll be barely used and you won't have to worry about any of that and all this and he was like and I'm not even and he said and I know this sounds horrible but when he said I'm not talking about anything physical your girl took a minute she took a long minute to think if his wife is okay with it then what makes it wrong but I knew that my heart would never ever be able to get into it and I just knew it wasn't right so even though it sounded amazing I knew it wasn't right and I couldn't bring myself to do it um, but yeah, he was talking about, and he was like, yeah, maybe it could grow into a physical attraction. You never know. No, no. So then I was like, okay. And then he was like, and I'm going to prove it to you. And he gave me $300 and I was like, I cannot accept this. I cannot. He said, even if you don't want to be any more than what this is, even if you don't want to like see me any more or whatever. And I was like, well, James, no matter what, you handled this very respectively, though, and you didn't make me feel, you, I was uncomfortable, but it wasn't you. It was the situation. Like, I let him know that. He was very respectful. I mean, the whole thing is crazy, but for how crazy it was, he was very respectful. Um, that's how you get you some ladies, boys. And so then um, I was like, you know, that's not the case. And he was like, and I was like, so I hope that if I end up not being able to be what you want me to be, we can still be where we are at and we're good friends. And he was like, yeah, no, of course, of course. And so he was like, but I want to prove it to you. So he gave me $300 and I was like, I cannot accept this money. And he said, take it. Cause if you don't take it now that I'm just going to come into work and give it. And then you're going to have to answer questions of why this guy is giving you $300. And I was like, you right. So then I took it. Um, but I was like, and he was like, but honestly, if you can't, um, if you can't see yourself with me, then don't worry about it. Um, that's just for spending time with me today. So, I mean, I guess I wasn't a sugar baby, but I hoard out for two hours worth of hanging out and lunch, whatever. Um, got $300 in those two hours, so <laughs> where you at? Um, but yeah, so then I went upstairs and I thought about it and I spoke to Heather and then she was kind of like, I mean, because we, we loved to go to the casinos back then and just play the penny slots. And he told me that he would take me when he'd go to the casinos and we'd get a room and all this stuff. And she was like, I mean, and he told me I could bring someone so I could feel comfortable. And she, she was like, hey, but she was just kidding. Um, she was like, honestly, do what you want to do. Um, so then I, of course, obviously I ended up deciding that it wasn't going to be more than what it was so then I gave him a phone call no I texted him yeah I texted him couldn't do that over the phone I, I have like weird phone anxiety I don't like to talk to people over the I'm weird like if I know you I'm okay with it but like I can't I I, it, I find it hard to call and like order food over the phone because I, I just weird I can't do it I don't know whatever I gotta get over that shit anyway um so yeah, so then I texted him and I was like, thank you so much, but I really don't, I've been thinking about it and I really, I just can't, I can't do that. I'm just not that kind of girl and I can't, and he was like, you know what, that's why I love you because you're not that kind of girl, but it's okay. And I had to try and don't worry about the $300, you can keep it. I should have, this is on my old phone, but I should have kept the message just to show you. And I was like, okay. And I said, well, thank you. And he was like, yeah. And he, and I was like, well, I hope to see you soon. And he was like, yeah, I hope to see you soon too. And to this day, I've never seen that man again. I don't know if, I don't think it necessarily was anger. I think it was just like, there's no point of going because she's not interested. I don't know. I've never seen his wife since then. I don't know if he told her. I don't know. But yeah, 
So that was the time that I almost became a sugar baby. Leave some comments down below of what you think about that crazy situation and if you have any suggestions of future videos. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and then hit that little bell so you're notified every time I upload a video. And I will definitely see y'all next time. Thanks again for missing the hippie. Good servers will go above and beyond to make their table happy. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're being cray cray or if you're being a little rude, we are talking mad shit behind your back. But to your face, we're going to smile and we're going to get you those 17 lemons and exactly three ice cubes because we want that tip because we have to pay the water bill. I did eat though. I mean, have you seen me? I ate. And it was good fish and chips. Uh, and if it grew into a physical attraction, could you just imagine us getting intimate and then that man would have a heart attack? It'd be one of those stories where the girl called 911 while she was riding some boy and he done died.